Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. A death investigation is underway in Perry County tonight. Good evening, I'm Will Puckett. A woman was found dead last night along an ATV trail in the Viper community. WYMT's Macy Marie talked with community members who say they are frightened and police who say they need your help finding out who the woman is. An unpleasant discovery leaving the community in fear. Anything of that nature should be a concern to all residents. Kentucky State Police say someone on a four-wheeler found a woman dead on an ATV trail off Lewis Cemetery Road in Viper. Uh, we just urge anyone with no matter how uh, uh, insignificant maybe the information may seem to, to contact uh, Kentucky State Police. Police do not know how the woman died at this time, but say it appears someone shot her. And now they need help figuring out the woman's identity. That's really very sad. Trooper Jody Sims hopes a description might help someone identify her. Uh, around five feet, three inches tall, and weighing approximately 130 pounds. Uh, the female was wearing a gray jacket, gray leggings with red boots and uh, appeared to be a multicolored shirt. One local who did not want to be shown on camera says the crime is concerning to the entire community. I think everyone is just waiting for an answer. As they wait for those answers. In Perry County, Macy Marie, WYMT Mountain News. The body was taken to Frankfurt for an autopsy. Anyone with information is asked to call Kentucky State Police Post 13 in Hazard. Today, a judge set Joshua Ellis's bond at $250,000 cash. He is the man police say hit 80 fusion on a road Wednesday night, killing him. Ellis is scheduled to appear in court Monday morning. Police charged him with failure to render aid, resulting in the death of fusion. Investigators say after hitting Fusion, Ellis and his 15-year-old son left the scene. They charged Ellis's son with tampering with physical evidence. He is now in a juvenile detention center. Tonight, a Clay County family wants your help. 26-year-old Tony Hinkle of Clay County went missing last month. They tell us he's never went this long without calling. Now they fear something bad has happened. WYMT's Justin Case talked with members of his family and he joins us now live with the latest. Justin. Well, I am here in Manchester in Clay County, right behind me, this house right here. This is where his family members live. Tony Hinkle is a 26 year old. Now I was told that he has three young children, two boys and a girl. Now his family says, although he was last seen at a homeless shelter in Frankfurt, they say he's lived in Clay County for most of his life. I also did talk with officials from Kentucky State Police and they say that there's no evidence or information that would suggest Hinkle is dead. Family members say he has been missing before, but never for this long. They say the hardest part about this is he hearing reports of bodies being found in the region and wondering if it's him. They say his mother has been hit the hardest. She's going to worry herself to death. She don't eat right no more. She's losing weight. She's sick. She's been sick since he's been gone. She loses her voice. It's just, it's hard for her. And when it's hard for her, it's hard for the family to look at her. And then we suffer even more. Well, and, you know, family members, they just want to know he's okay or if something has happened to him. They hope people with information about what happened to him can contact either the family or Kentucky State Police. Uh, we'll have much more on this story coming up tonight at 11. Will? Justin, thank you for that report. We definitely hope to hear good news soon. In Clay County, a man is accused of shooting a rifle in someone's driveway. The sheriff's office says they arrested 38-year-old Brian Gibson last night. Witnesses told them he was shooting a firearm in a driveway. Deputies say Gibson smelled like alcohol. They also found him with a 12-gauge shotgun. He is charged with wanton endangerment, endangering the welfare of a minor, and public intoxication. Thousands of people will stop by Pikeville during the next 48 hours to celebrate Hillbilly Days. We showed you some of the fun yesterday. Today, we sent WIMT's news director Steve Hensley out there. He joins us now with more on day two, hopefully a little less rain this time. Steve? Well, it's been an interesting day here at Hillbilly Days, to say the least. It rained, of course, a little earlier this morning. If you were with us at the top of the 530 newscast, you saw a very strong storm move through just as we went on the air. It uh, blew our 
tent over. We had to rush inside to our bureau. We're soaking wet, but we're fine. We have seen some pictures of a little bit of damage, tents blown over and things like that around here at Hillbilly Days. I have not heard of any injuries. Hopefully nobody was hurt. This storm came quick and fast. If it was not a severe storm, I don't know what was, but uh, Fortunately, we're all okay, just soaking wet. But it has been an interesting day. Uh, before the storm came at 5.30, uh, a lot of folks were down here enjoying the festivities. We had a few hours, a dry slot, uh, until the storm started. Uh, Mary Ann Fletcher has been here all day. Mary Ann, come on in here. Uh, you were here yesterday and today, and you're no stranger to Hillbilly Days because you're an Eastern Kentucky native. <laughs> exactly, Steve. Now, growing up here in the mountains, you just know, during this time of the year, you have to go to Hillbilly Days <laughs> at least once if not all three days and uh, today a lot of people are telling me that they actually use Hibbley Days as a place to reunion. you know you go and see old friends you see old family that you haven't seen in a while and the food's a bonus too I've talked to a few people who say this atmosphere is what keeps them coming back friends family and food I just like the atmosphere Many people like Bruce Justice come out to Hibbley Days for those three things. Oh, it's really good. I, I, I had some of the uh, uh, sirloin tips last night. Day two of the 43rd annual Hillbilly Days Festival kicked off with around 225 vendors. More than 85 of those are dedicated to food. I've been coming here to Hillbilly Days for approximately about 33 years now. Stephen Grishin works with Miss Piggy's Pork Shop. Uh, we have the bonus strip sandwich. We have the one pound pork shop. They travel all the way from Indiana to Hillbilly Days. We love the people down here. Whether you come here to see old friends or eat your favorite festival food, there is something for everyone. Steve, there's also <laughs> a lot of events throughout festivals, right? That's right, and I must say you're lucky because you got to stay dry. She was editing that story uh, while we had the deluge earlier. So. Listen, I was working inside the bureau, typing on my computer, and the next thing I know, I look up, I can only see white, only white, and I looked at uh, one of our new reporters, Buddy Forbes, and I said, Buddy, look, and it was just incredible and it was scary it, it was a little bit scary but we're fine uh, there like you said there are a lot of things going on earlier today while festival goers were celebrating uh, hillbilly days outside here in pikeville historians were celebrating inside the big sandy heritage museum a 32 derringer single shot pistol formerly belonging to william anderson hatfield aka devil ants hatfield was loaned to the museum today the gun was gifted to dr dana moore in the late 1920s moore was hatfield Field's doctor before his death. Moore's granddaughter, Leslie Moore Rivers, said she wants her grandfather's part of the Hatfield McCoy history to live on. Uh, I, since I was the inheritor of, of the gun, I, I am excited. All of my family is gone now, so I'm, I'm like the end of the line, and I felt like that the gun needed to go into a museum. The gun is currently being appraised, so no value is known at this time. Well, again, we're here live in downtown Pikeville at Hibbley Days. Chief Meteorologist Paige Noel is uh, joining me now. All right, Chief Meteorologist Paige Noel joining me now live here in downtown Pikeville. Uh, Paige, this storm at 530 was not severe. No, it was not severe warned at all. The only thing I can come up with, Steve, is that it just moved into Pike County where we've seen a lot of sunshine today, especially after that first line moved through. I think it got a, enough energy to make it severe. So we definitely not get, did not get a warning um, at all. But so that severe or that storm is actually now moving through another part of Pike County. It's soon moving into West Virginia. Just but. to let folks know too, if it had been a severe storm, uh, we would have yeah. moved inside. We had no idea mm -mm. the wind was going to I, do that we just knew it was going to rain so we moved under the tent and i yeah. you know kind of said hey it might be a little bit gusty and we just thought it was going to be one gust ended up just non-stop for a couple of minutes so yeah we are okay though we saw some hail here too so it's <laughs> definitely definitely should have been severe warned for sure yeah. but let's go ahead and take you to some of our cameras we'll go ahead and go to stonecrest we are seeing a few clouds over there we're also seeing not many showers over there we saw a few a little bit earlier today satellite and radar you'll notice where that line moved through 
and now it is out of here really pinpoint doppler you see it over there now moving into pike county into mingo county west virginia that's the exact same storm right there that we were seeing a little bit ago you can see it's zoomed in on it so that's moving into mingo county so if you're in that area north of the phelps community you're definitely going to want to take cover because that is just what came through pike it looks like it's dying down just a little bit temperatures in the upper 60s lower 70s we're actually starting to cool down here it's a little chilly probably because we're soaking wet but definitely chilly drying out though as we head through the rest of tonight pleasant saturday on the way and we're talking about more rounds of storms as we head into your sunday i'll have that and more coming up in just a little bit well Paige, uh th this evening uh hopefully we stay dry it is co it's cooled off a lot mm -hmm. but now what about tomorrow we've got the parade tomorrow of course concert tomorrow night inside the expo center but a big day tomorrow you think we'll stay dry i'm hoping we'll stay dry we're going to keep our fingers crossed we see most of those showers south tomorrow we'll see that in future view a little bit later uh, but right now i think Pikeville should remain dry. Let's keep our fingers crossed. They should, especially after today. You should get a break. <laughs> well, I will always remember your first day as Chief Meteorologist at YMT. I will too. <laughs> what a day it's been. Let's go back in the studio and a dry Will Puckett. <laughs> will? Steve, I hope you guys can get dry and I hope you don't get sick after that those temperatures start to drop. Thanks guys and Paige, congratulations on becoming chief. Well, officers in one southern Kentucky town used a new approach to find people texting while driving and not wearing seat belts. The Barberville Police Department spent most of today looking for violations while up in a tractor trailer. WYMT's Phil Pendleton rode along and shows us how they worked to enforce the laws. A tow truck pulled out on the U.S. 25 in Knox County Friday, but it was not headed to a crash. And today we're looking for various distracted drivers, which you know can vary from anything to eating to a dog in your lap. So they were out in hopes of preventing a tragedy. However, we're going to focus on the cell phone usage. Using a phone to make or receive calls while driving is not illegal, but texting is. She passed us and I could look over. She had her cell phone in her lap. She was texting while she was driving. So officers in the semi radio to patrol officers who then made the traffic stops. Why'd you not wearing your seatbelt? <laughs> I just didn't rate to get it. There's a lower seatbelt usage in rural areas as opposed to urban. Our last seatbelt survey, I think, was around 60 to 68 percent of seatbelt uses. Officers issued citations along with some advice. Now I've got some papers here, one on distracted driving, also another one on seatbelt safety. We want to educate the public about it too. Officers discovered more than just simple violations. One man was found wanted on three warrants. The driver of this Mustang said he didn't have any insurance. Right, I'm honest any way I go now. I won't lie to you. You were to me, and I appreciate that. Nah. You guys be careful. God bless. Giving new meaning to the phrase to serve and protect. In Knox County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. A pretty neat way to go about it and a very important job they're doing. Now, police say the ticket for not wearing seat belts or texting is $25 plus court costs. Keeneland was a sea of blue this morning as nearly a thousand, one thousand diehard UK fans lined up to get signatures on a limited edition Maker's Mark bottle. For many, it's a tradition. The bottle honors the 2012 men's basketball championship team. But thanks to flight delays out of Chicago, fans had to go without Coach Cal's signature. There is good news, however. Coach Cal made a promise on Twitter saying he will personally sign every bottle for ticket holders at another special event. There is no word yet on when that will be. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Mountain News in just a bit.